Hello, welcome back. This is part two of my painting of Blackness Castle, a, a wonderful castle on the Firth of Forth, about 10 miles west of Edinburgh. I'll be finishing the painting here and I hope you enjoy it. Right, I'm going to work on the buildings to the right of it now. So I'm happy with that. I think it fulfills what I'm looking for and that, that is um, an impression of the castle. It looks 3D and that's all I need. So I'm going to move into the buildings to the right. Tanya tells me that my nose keeps on appearing in the video, but it's really quite difficult not to do that. So apologies for that. I'm sure you don't want to see my nose. Right, so side of the building now. So ultramarine blue and a little bit of brown coming in. Again, not mixing, over mixing too much. And that's the size of the building coming in. And then the roof line coming in. That's okay. And now we have the tiled roof, which I'm going to do slightly yellower just to distinguish it from everything else. Nice and light. Tile, the roofs go off into the distance here. And then the, the chimneys, which again I'll do in a more red. On there. Yep. And then this wall here coming in. I'm going to tackle the grass now, and there's a dark patch here. So I'm really picking out values now, picking them out and, and popping them in. The, the, the grass has a sort of, um, there's sort of lot of rabbits there, I think, so there's a bit sort of destroyed. And it's constantly moving. There's lots of tones with grass. It, well, it seems to be one colour. There are lots of colours in there. There's the horizon. And then there's a, a greener grass, a bluer grass at the bottom. Okay. So you're just trying to vary it a bit. Okay, that's quite nice. So we'll put some little details now at the top of the hill. So there's some there's some trees there which I really like. And there's a really spindly one which is sort of shows the weather that's up there. It's so brutal. They're going everywhere. It's a bit too dark. And there's another one in the distance here. Okay, we'll leave that for the moment. So working down the picture again, we're, we're coming to the sea. So I've put the basic wash on, but there's a sort of cloud effect that on, on, the, on the water there. So it's darker and lighter and darker and lighter. So it, they change mostly in, the, in this far distant part of the water. So I've given my palette a little bit of a wash. It's getting a little bit grim. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, maybe, maybe cer cerulean blue. I'll put a patch there, then ultramarine blue. Trying to work out the colours of it, they're not easy. And a little bit of Viridian maybe. So right in the distance here, I'm going to place on some colour. And what, it, what, it's, what I'm trying to do is to give the impression that there's a, there's a cloud moving, moving along, sort of darkening this area. That's what happens when, when it's a cloudy day. You get bright patches and light patches, and I really enjoy that part of it. That, that to me, is, is, is real beauty when you have that speckledy approach to the landscape. So give a bit more here. So the waves are sort of coming in that way. So now I'm going to try and give, it, give a bit of the shape to the water now. So, so maybe it's coming in a bit like that. And, Yeah, it's, it's really, you, you, with techniques, you have to sort of make them up on the spot, really. You, 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 get, you get given a problem and you've got to react to it and say, well, what, what is the solution to it? And 
Sometimes you really have to be very creative with a solution. It's not necessarily obvious. Trying to get, trying to get the sense of the, the waves coming in. So the, the lines become more vertical. They're coming in around the curve. Don't know whether you like that. I quite like that. Maybe at the, at the right at the end there as well, I'm going to really darken it a bit. So right here, I think it, it goes really dark in that X section there. So maybe give a little bit, little bit more of a hint. It's fun, it's fun painting water. Watercolor, water and watercolour in general, is, they, they, do, they do work well to each other. You're, you're, they're two watery substances and I, I really like that. So just dabbing in a bit of colour where I see it. So it's a very muted colour. Uh, I'm not trying to paint it bright like the painting I did in North Berwick. This is a subtle affair. waves coming in here. So the next part that I'm going to do is working on the sand, the little beach that's a, that appeared here. And um, I, I like working from top to bottom on the picture. So yeah, this is the next logical step of it. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of seaweed on it. So there's, it's, it's a bit of a brownie sort of color. And that sort of, that sort of round here, maybe a bit darker. Yeah, that's nice. Not quite the colour, but I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't need to. I'm not interested in getting perfect colour. I'm not interested in perfect colour. And then it's up to the top, it does something as well here. Then I can break that edge off a bit. Okay. It gives a sense of that and it, it does there's a sort of speckled approach too where you've got individual lumps of seaweed or general beach dross okay that's it's all right nice bit of beach so Heading down to the bottom left hand corner now where the beach is. So I'm looking carefully at it. There's a sort of darker line here. So uh, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my two favorite colors, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. So you see that's the way I'm going I'm to scoop them up a bit, not over mix them, and then try and apply, try and imagine the, the, the shoreline. It's sort of reflecting a bit. Maybe that's a bit bluer there. Yeah, that's okay. And then the sand coming in. So I don't want to mix that with any of the blues really because that would just turn, make it go and turn into a green. So I've got to be careful not to do that. And then try and mix that in, put it in. There's a, there's a lot of seaweed as well, which I'll put in. I might put it in now. So it's quite dark. So a brownie, more of a brownie blue than a bluey brown. And then all the way along there's Darker, a bit darker than that. Seaweed coming in, it's sort of, and they sort of add something to the bottom left-hand corner, which is pretty um, sparse in anything going on. You need to fill a picture with interest. Interest is a very important part. The the pre-Raphaelites were amazing at that. They they believed that every inch of the painting should be should have something there. But they did it in a, a most amazing way with their detail and their, their vivid, uh, transparent colours. Uh, I used to love the pre-Raphaelites. They, they, were, they were heroic figures in my youth. 
and um, I tried to paint like them, but it, it was just too long-winded. It's the, these these people. A lot of the pre-Raphaelites were quite were quite wealthy, so they could afford to spend forever on a painting. Um, but I can't do that. There we go. So that's the sort of given the sense of this seaweedy on the on the on the, uh, on the beach. So this is the really interesting part of the painting now, which, which is going to take you in, this wall here, that's going to take you in on a little journey through the picture. And there's a little bit of detail here, and there's this really interesting shadow that, that, that it's in. Uh, so I'm gonna paint the shadow in quickly, just to give a sense of, just to, to fill in more, so I know where I stand on it. So it's, it's a bluey sort of color, the shadow. So I'm just trying to work it out. I don't wanna, it's quite tricky because it's a bluey yellowy colour, but if I mix blue and yellow together, they're going to be green, so I'm a bit stymied there. So I'm going to make it more of a blue colour, and it comes in here. So that's cerulean blue, which is a greeny, a greeny blue. Uh, yeah, greeny blue. Add a bit more to it. That's no harm, I can change the colour, maybe a little bit of ultramarine, uh, but cobalt blue coming in here. So that's the shadow, and it has quite a hard edge to it too. With the rest of it, so yeah, so that's the shadow of this wall coming in, which is in itself quite dark. Maybe and I might I might darken up a bit later as well. So I'm going to get my smaller brush out now, and the, these are they're like little. It's like a um, castellation on a castle, the castle going up and down, up and down the brick. So I'm going to have to be quite careful with this. So there's a shadow area. So let's call that the, let's call the, that the shadow. And then it drops down into here. And then there's another shadow of the next one coming in. So it's sort of a neutrally gray color, nothing that complicated. And they just keep on coming down, checking the picture always. Already that's given it a sense. Just move the picture over a bit. There we go. Just so I can see it on my computer screen. So now, it really is a question of working out how to do it. And you, you have to, as I said earlier, you have to sort of invent ways of how do you get around a particular problem. And you're always confronted with a new problem in watercolour painting. So there's a, there's a creative inventive approach and my, um, there's invention in my family as well. My dad was an inventor, he invented a few things. So uh, I, I, when speaking to my dad, it was always in a creative sort of, how do you get around this problem? And we'd have lots of discussions about that. And I think that helps a great deal in painting. Right, so now we're gonna have the front of the wall coming in, so it's a greeny grey colour. That was too much, <laughs> it wasn't that colour. That's okay though. Maybe. Just trying to get you trying to get the bricks in. I don't normally paint detail like this. Yeah, so there we go. There's something on the top of it. Actually, that little blue mark, I think, quite helped it, and that was an accident. But I think one of the important things to do with watercolour is to recognise good accidents. I love good accidents. Um, as when, when something um, happens unexpectedly, Some, sometimes it's not a bad thing. So that's a good thing to, to uh, try and look out for. Right, now we're going to do this, this, the shadow side of the wall, which is much darker. Now, I don't, it, when, you're, when, you're, when you're painting from life, um, it, you, you, you get a completely accurate range of what the value is. But when you're painting from a photograph, you're never quite sure, because photographs do lie an awful lot. Okay, 
Okay. So there's the side of the, the bricks coming in. Quite effective. It's looking good. I was wondering how I was going to do that. It becomes a little bit lighter at the front. There. and then much darker at the bottom, right here. So I'm going to get a little bit more, little bit more uh, raw uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber on it. So it's much darker at the bottom. And a few little marks just to get a bit of detail of it going. Not just a flat colour. Always referring back to my photograph because the drawing doesn't. The drawing I did the drawing, but the the drawing's dead after the um, after the uh, the composition is done, and then I'm really relying on the photographs. So just varying the darks. Maybe that was a bit too much blue, but again, I like that. Happy accidents. It's quite a common term in, in watercolour painting, happy accidents. But it's, they're very true though. And the final mark here. There. I quite like that. It's a nice effect. Quite quite colourful. The, the little, little bit of extra blue really helps it. Sorry if I'm getting in the way at the moment. So just giving a little bit more detail in the shadowy sides of the turrets of the, of the wall. The castellation. So making that go off into the distance. And then on the far distance, the, the, the wall has a sort of, I would say raw, raw umber. Not a colour I use very often. So, so that's the raw umber there. So it's, because I don't use it very often, it's not in a good state. It does take a little bit of grinding. So let's do a few, few marks here. A bit lighter. I tend to paint things with quite a wet paint, really, overall. So I'm quite a wet painter. And then into the distance they go. And then this one. Yeah. What I'm doing, I'm darkening this section here because I think it needs to be brought out more to give it to give it the contrast with the sea. So just that little bit there, and that's an aesthetics judgment, not reality. A few hints of bricks in this wall. That was too dark. Just so it looks like it's got a bit of variation there. Nice. I really like that. That's really fun. So I think that worked out quite well. That, I was quite pleased with the way that that wall worked out. So now I'm going to go into the shadow again of this, um, of the wall, onto the beach. And I'm just going to hit, put a few sort of marks of seaweed that were potentially there. Oh, they are there. So, lots of little marks. And maybe maybe darken some of these marks up as well. OK. 
Okay. Soften them up too. Okay, I thought that was quite effective. Now into the road, just to um, finish a bit of that off. Otherwise it's a bit of a plain area, so that's gonna, it's a bit, it needs to be darkened down a bit. So, so I've got the base of it there quite nicely. Uh, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of, make it seem a little bit grayer. To the distance. Might come back to that a bit more later. So there's there's the painting now, which is three quarters done. I think um, I, I think it's it's it, everything's covered now. Everything's got had a little bit of work done to it, and so now it's just a question of refining a few things. So I'm going to go to my small brushes now, and just just give a little bit of detail uh, here and there, and may, maybe maybe I'll um, I'll in introduce a few shadows. So, I've, for example, I've got the building up here. There's, I can introduce a shadow here. I'm not going to paint Tanya on the beach, I don't think. I think she'd like me to paint her on the beach, but I'm not going to this time. So that's the, the shadows of the, the, uh, the building coming in. And it's got a few windows. There we go. I think I'll leave the castle. I, I just, I like that at the moment. I don't think it needs anything more to it. Uh, the, the wall is much darker. So maybe, maybe I'll introduce a little bit more darkness in the wall, but just a little bit. So it's here. Maybe that helps it a bit. Yeah, that was okay. Again, these are decisions that you make that at the end of a painting, which could ruin it. It really could. Okay, so that little S bend in there. Now the, the road to the right, I'm gonna change a bit because there are, there are, there are sort of um, lights coming across. So I might introduce a sort of mark here just to indicate that there's something coming across, if I make it go. So it hits, it hits the wall and then goes up, just to give it the sense that there's something there. And then there was a sort of dark a bit here coming in, the road. So what I'm gonna do now is to introduce some boats into the picture. I, I think this is very plain here now, not plain, but I think you could add have an addition of something here coming in. So I'm going to add a few boats into the picture. There weren't any boats uh, on the day, but I, I have been there before and I've, I found a photograph with, with some boats. So I'm going to add that. So there's one there. So the shadow, one there. So just hinting at the shape of it. And then there's one here. A window there. So I don't want to go into too much detail of this. I just wanted to feel like, oh, that's a boat. So just painting the, the darker parts of it. In cerulean blue mainly. Sail. Okay. So not much has been indicated. Yeah, a little bit of red. I should do it. 
let that dry for a bit. Right, so we're almost done now. Um, it, it, what I'm going to go into now is the white paint. So I'm trying to mix my white paint up here. So I've, I've, just, I've just put it on the palette because I didn't want it to go dry. And uh, yeah, so it's just, it's just a few little bits and bobs that I want to put on really, um, just, to, just to bring out a little bit of the detail. So I might pop my glasses on <laughs> quickly. So the, the roof tile there, top of the roof. So I'm, I'm working everywhere really, I'm not, I don't want to focus on one particular area. So the things in the middle there. Top of the wall is a sort of reflection, there's a sort of top there again, I'll bring that around there as well. So a few highlights. It's just a little bit here and there, which, but I, I really enjoy that part of it. Add a bit of colour to it. Okay, and a bit of surf. Bring the surf out. It's not much, but to me it makes a difference. There's a lot of coming up in the beach here as well. So the surf sort of rushing up onto the cliffs. And here, which I've sort of indicated anyway. And the rocks here. Yeah, so I think, I think that's made a, a bit of a difference. These see is quite a pale colour and I'm debating whether it needs to be dark. At the moment I'm sort of thinking, no, I, I think it's fine. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Just placing a few bits of highlights. Doesn't have to be much. And this is very personal really, you don't have to do this. some buildings at the back here which I'm going to sort of hit the, sort of the dockyards are behind here so just to indicate a little bit of something going on there. So the last bit of white, of white paint is on the boats just to bring them out a bit. Just hinting at them. So I'm not going to get into the detail of them. Just the sort of feeling of them being there. Nice and simple. Okay, I'll add, maybe add a few bits and, bits and bobs later on. Um, and then we need the mast coming in. So that's going up there like that. Maybe a bit too thick, but there we go. Another mast. There. Amazing what the mast does. You instantly know what it is when you see a mast coming in. Just give a little bit of reflection in the water on these things. Okay, and maybe, maybe a little red boy, you know, how about that? That's not in the picture at all, but um, I, I, Caro, the great French painter, he always put, popped a little, little bit of red in places, just to, so if I get a little big bit of a boy here, maybe, here. So that's good. And then maybe a, 
a yellow boy as well. Just have a little bit of colour in it. So there's the painting pretty much done. Um, and um, I'm really very pleased with that. So there's just the one last remaining thing. And if, if you have been watching my channel, you know I like to put a few uh, pencil marks in. Um, and uh, I do enjoy doing that. So it's, it's just, I like the, um, the sort of resolution that it gives, really, and uh, the, the fun that it gives. And my, my painting is all about fun. Just, it sort of adds a little bit of detail here or there. So here's the finished painting, and uh, I think it was pretty good, really. I, I'm very pleased with parts of it, and in particular the castle. The castle is something that could have gone horribly wrong in watercolour, and it, I could have added more and more detail, and it would have just lost every bit of sort of impressionist feeling about it at all. So I'm particularly pleased with the castle. It looks like a three-dimensional form, but it's done very simply. And I thought that the wall coming in, that, that was effective too. You really get that feeling of going around it and the shadow of the wall on the beach, which I did in that cerulean blue, which was really turned out nicely. And the colour of the water is quite a muted colour. It was a muted day, so I, I thought that was, that was nice too. But overall, I, I think that's turned out nicely and I'm pleased with it. The size of this picture is 18 by 12 inches. Well, here's the finished painting, and it, it's work, worked out really much better than I thought it was going to work out. Some, sometimes when I work from photographs and sketches, um, it's a little bit funny, and the, because the camera sees things in its own way, and in its own tonal range and colours, it can get a bit confusing. But this one worked out particularly well, I thought, and uh, I'm really quite pleased with it. I'm really looking forward to seeing it framed, and perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll put a little post on when it's all framed up for you to see it in that state, which is the best way to see a painting when it's all framed up. Um, hopefully this Sunday we'll be um, popping on a little video of one of the paintings I did in North Berwick, but it might not happen because it's, a, it's Easter weekend and we've got lots of people coming, so that might make it a bit difficult. And Tanya tends to do most of the editing on the computer. I do a little bit, but she, she, she does a lot of that. So she's very good at it too, so I'm pleased she does it. Uh, more of a relief more than anything else. So yeah, so... Uh, that's, that's, uh, that, that was a really good experience and I enjoyed that. Um, thanks everyone again for the coffee that people have been buying me. That's very handy. It's going to come in particularly handy when we go up north with all the diesel costs of the travel around uh, Scotland as it's, it's quite a big country. Not a big country, but the, wo the roads are so windy and long. You have to go round things all the time in the mountains, really. So anyway, thanks very much for watching and um, look forward to seeing you next time. If you could give me a thumbs up, that really helps the channel and gets the message pushed out to everyone else. And subscribe if you can as well. It's completely free to, sub to subscribe. All you've got to do is to get an account and uh, th there's no payment to that at all. So it's a free subscription. And uh, anyway, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much. Bye bye.